at recording in progress. We start in two minutes or one minute. Yep, it's three o'clock my time and we can start. Hi everyone again and good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. And thank you very much uh, for attending today. This is my first time speaking at Collapse Fair and I'm proud of to be part of this amazing list of speakers here. I hope next year I can speak again, but face to face this time. Uh, as we have little time, lot of content. Uh, let's start. Uh, this is Sardar speaking from my home office in London and I am originally from Turkey if you know uh, if you know me before that and I moved to the UK two years ago. Uh, I'm, I have been working on Notes and Domino for over uh, 20 years now. Uh, I'm a Notes the Domino Java X pages developer and transforming into a bloody admin in uh, full moon and also earned by my uh, for my own company and I'm an enthusiastic believer in open source software so that's why I am also a proud part of uh, OpenNTF board uh, as a member director. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, before we start, I would like to thank all sponsors of Collapse Fair. These companies play a, a crucial role uh, for our community by providing financial support or support in other, uh, a, a, with other vehicles to these community events. So uh, please spend some more time to see their sessions in between. Uh, and the actual session, uh, today, I'm going to talk about designing RESTful APIs for domain applications. If you know this, uh, probably you have seen this before because I have uh, been speaking about this same topic uh, a, a couple of times uh, in the past. Uh, so this time I will uh, take the RESTful architecture part a little bit shorter. Uh, because HCL, thanks to HCL, they are adding uh, new uh, methodologies, new content to the second part. The first part, we are going to have a little chat about RESTful architecture. I will try to explain very basics of uh, RESTful architecture uh, to base uh, or support the basics of uh, the second part. And that part is uh, the real deal. Uh, and we are going to have uh, we are going to have a talk about uh, domino methods, different dom domino methods uh, to provide restful uh, uh, services. So let's get started with a simple question. Why should we care? I mean, today, you know, we can't resist th these two, uh, three things anymore, user experience, uh, business processes, and of course, integration. And first of all, you know, many legacy domain applications needs a serious uh, facelifting, and uh, we probably want to keep our data and processes back uh, in the NSF for many reasons. Maybe we don't like other languages, or maybe we don't want to learn a new database. We don't want to migrate all the data. Whatever the reason is, an API help us uh, to integrate uh, existing backend to uh, much better experiences in the front end. 
The second is IT world is becoming a huge jungle and increasingly we are getting more demand uh, to integrate with other animals and plants in this uh, jungle. And using text files to integrate uh, is no more valid or no more practical, especially with distance applications for obvious reasons. And RESTful became a, a common language between different developers from different technologies or different backends. Last but not the least, uh, business processes are evolving fast and they are getting bigger and bigger, uh, as specialized as uh, they are. And Domino applications are part of these business processes. And we have to talk to other business processes in the uh, software world. Uh, we have to talk to Salesforce. We have to talk to CRM uh, or uh, ERP processes, et cetera. So there are many solutions to coordinate these multiple APIs uh, in, on the market, like Nox Red or uh, similar applications. And uh, fancy applications relying to these uh, APIs on the backends are uh, becoming increasingly popular these days. I can add some more and more marketing buzz in these slides, but fortunately I'm with all the, my geek friends and Wikipedia will be enough for us. These orange words are very important to understand the basics of RESTful services. We are talking about a way to architect different services with nothing more than a set of uh, constraints. And when played by books, uh, RESTful architecture is supposed to aim, uh, provide scalability, security, and performance. To provide some examples, we are using much simpler data types, less number of protocols, simpler architectures, simpler URLs, and these intuitive design features. And I mean, uh, these URLs, these verbs, gets and puts and deletes with beautiful combined with resource names, parameters, IDs, etc. These URL conventions, I mean, they provide a more developer friendly conversation in our applications. And architecture has uh, this inherent feature. It's stateless, cacheable, layered, etc. There might be multiple points of entry and it doesn't really matter uh, who gets any request or who is cooking uh, the meal at the backend. And what client sees is only a service that responds to our HTTP requests. And in theory, this has a potential to scale up very effectively like this buzzwords. I, this is inherently scalable, robust, and resilient. It doesn't happen all the time, but it has a potential. Okay, back to reality again. Uh, REST seems like basically based on very simple mechanism of the web. As you see here, it's nothing new. It's the uh, old school applications, but we are putting it into developers' life and it had a huge impact. I mean, especially considering the evolution of the architectures in time. In today's world, uh, our applications are much more divided into independent bricks of uh, bricks talking to each other or orchestrating for a uh, ultimate common purpose, which is called the application or the business process. And uh, the practical implications are fascinating. All those little arrows here are representing restful channels between different software components. That leads us to, to the summary. Restful architecture is everywhere. And as I said before, it's not just a hype, not just a product, not just a protocol. It's a solid architecture, well-defined rules, intuitive conventions, and uh, it's vastly common uh, adaptation uh, in modern frameworks, etc. Now, as we get a joint generic overview uh, on RESTful architectures, we can go into one level down to detail. I mean, we are talking about designing RESTful API or maybe designing an API overall. And I should underline that uh, here, API design world has two distinct camps now, uh, code first and design first camps. I mean, code first, I guess, is coming from service-oriented 
architectures, but uh, design first is something I myself feel uh, closer to. To illustrate this approach, uh, I will create, I will put here in uh, a simple imaginary case study to talk about these design steps. And you might know, and you, uh, I hope you know this great collaboration site of OpenNTF. And thanks to a great team of curators, it's a created content aggregated, aggregating all kinds of news and blog posts in the collaboration space. Not surprising, it's an open source application. It's running on Domino, again, not surprisingly. And it's an X-based application. And we have done significant work on that in the past. Uh, it's not the rocket science, but still uh, it's a proper application with different modules inside. Suppose we are going to design a new API maybe for a React application in front of that maybe I don't know. Uh, we don't want to re-implement the backend of the application. There are based data there. And uh, designing an API would be great ideas to start. And when we start in such a task, we will probably start with the presentation layer and consider what we need to re-implement uh, this front page, for instance. And from what I see, I see stories, I see tags, I see authors, I see many different objects. These are all JSON objects, in fact, and simple JSON objects. We are calling them resources in the API world, in the RESTful world. Uh, also, we need to see some recent stories here. We need to see stories by tag name, stories by author. So we need definitely a stories endpoint, and we need to be able to uh, categorize that with author, with tag. We need to be able to sort it by date, etc. These are endpoint designs. And slowly we are building up uh, these endpoints, documenting it, our favorite open API specs tool, which you have one, uh, I, I'm sure. And we create some stops uh, for these basic services we need. We need to write all endpoints and uh, we need to put necessary schema for all data types, response types, maybe validation rules, et cetera, et cetera. And after some time, we will end up with such an API design. And we have not written any single line of code right now. Uh, we can later reiterate, uh, iterate new services if needed. Uh, but this is the big picture, and this is the guideline for us to implement our backend. This is guideline for the UI designer to implement uh, frontend in the future. Uh, I see a question now. Uh, Richard asks, uh, is the collaboration today API and NSF database open source? NSF database is open source. Uh, this says, uh, I'm talking about this open API. I put them into uh, uh, my GitHub account. It's linked in at the end of the uh, session material. So you can, uh, in, I, I just created this for experimentally for my sessions. In fact, that's not, uh, the API is not something uh, you can download now, right now, I, but you can see on uh, GitHub, of course. Anyway. Open API specs uh, provide this master project plan and uh, whatever language we use, we will uh, use this and we can articulate this with other developers, other front-end developers, for instance, to get feedback, integration developers, etc. So great thing is that they don't even need to know in, about anything uh, related to collaboration today. I, I mean, tags are not called tags in collaboration today, they are categories and uh, they don't need to know that there are, there is no date field, there is an publication date. Uh, somehow we put an to every fields, uh, field names and they don't need to know that we are wrapping this API uh, and we, we can provide whatever we want. So, so far we built a contract. We designated a contract for our API and this uh, contract, uh, we started from end product working backwards. This is the design first coming from. And this forced us 
to follow conventions as well. Uh, now we can prototype the API and start coding. I don't think so because the crucial part is the missing part. In general, this is procrastinated in real life. Uh, we didn't have designed some part of uh, the API, the new API, like security. Uh, security design is important because uh, deciding how to implement is definitely connected with the security choices we made. I mean, if you are going to use token-based authentication, it's, it doesn't mean, uh, it, it's not a good idea to implement X pages or web agents. In the same way, security nature of the product brings a life cycle. We have to plan it. Who, we, who will manage accounts? Who will manage uh, tokens, etc. And there are also minor details we might consider. I mean, uh, once API is out there, changing contract is generally out of question. If you are providing restful services and at the same time writing the front end up, it's no problem, go for it. But often that's not the case. I mean, documentation is more important than any development in development project but we already started the open api uh, specifications so we we are halfway through we don't have a problem swagger and open api it's are, are these are great concepts to learn uh, especially test for testing mocking mock up apis etc let's take a deep breath now and ready to dive into Domino stuff because it's time to pick uh, the way we implement the REST service now. So which way is the best? There are different methods to implement a RESTful API for our applications in Domino. I think these categories will cover all polite and respectful scenarios. Uh, and let's review them one by one. I reserve the front seat row to the newest player on the market. Uh, ACL is creating something very important in their labs for a while. This is in, in fact bigger than it looks. Uh, the feature implications would be interesting to see. And it's called Domino Keep, ACL Domino Keep, which uh, also known as, I think it's going to be known as Domino REST API in official wording. So it will make, probably make, uh, hopefully make domain access services obsolete. So it's currently on early access phase and general availability is expected very soon in 1201. And deep down, Keep provides an interface between Domino and RESTful consumers, but it's a bit more than that. Keep has several functions. Uh, it provides a form view agent access for domain applications. It can tweak what we expose to the REST clients uh, in multiple ways and add some extra security to, to the process. Uh, there is more, uh, we can access design elements, we can access mail address book, calendar, and also a huge thing is server administration functionalities. It's also sub, it also supports all data, open data access, which is very useful for data integration between tools and applications, uh, which are compliant to all data. And uh, like Salesforce, like Excel, like SAP, you can directly uh, put the data from Domino to uh, these applications. Uh, security is an important capability in Keep. It supports JSON web tokens within different scenarios. I won't go into detail because yesterday Graham and Chris did a whole session about JWT, JWT implementation. I recommend watching it. All security is opt-in in this uh, Keep because I, I mean, uh, it's always access denied if not specifically given. Uh, one of the most powerful features is probably agent processing and running agents from HTTP is not nothing new. Uh, but what Keep does supports, uh, I mean, Keep supports a synchronous agent call. I mean, you tell Keep to run an agent, it runs in the background in a separate thread. And when it's completed, it can call back a, any specific URL and we can also Past parameters, past document context, etc., and we can reuse our agents. Maybe our some of our business logic uh, with a RESTful API. Make sure you check this specific feature; it's great. 
And another important feature is accessibility. But before that, I will explain some details about Keep architecture. Uh, when you install Keep, it loads Keep task in the Domino server, which is the bridge between Domino world and outside world. All HTTP requests are coming into this task and the listener, and they are transferred to the event bus, something named event bus. And Keep is based on a technology named Eclipse Vertex, uh, which is a reactive toolkit for Java. It's not big deal uh, for now, but it's built of verticals. And if you know how to build a vertical, which is a like an actor doing specific jobs in the event-driven environment, uh, the nicest nice thing about uh, this architecture is if you know something about vertical, if you can uh, provide verticals to the system, you can extend these capabilities of uh, keep. I mean, you can add new capabilities, add new processors, add new, uh, add new services, etc., etc. Also, I'd like to share an exciting detail here. It uses something like Domino JNX, and which is the next generation Java API for Domino supporting some mo modern Java feature. And thanks to uh, Karlstan, I think I saw Karlstan here, and uh, he's, uh, he wrote the Domino JNA open source software. Uh, Domino JNX is the next generation open, uh, of Domino JNA, I guess. So it will be open source, I guess. I don't know the details yet, but uh, this is very exciting for me. We have already, we already had uh, OpenNTF Domain API as a great uh, Java API replacement, but it was based on classical Domain uh, Java API, and it, it was bringing some of these uh, junks from the old API. So this is a new one and pretty exciting. Anyway, anyway, bottom line, this is an exciting project to watch. Uh, if you attended one of my sessions before, you would notice that I have removed domain access services. Uh, I hope it's, it's going to die for a good reason because I think Domino Keep will be a great replacement for domain access uh, services with much more capabilities. And the, it's, it defines the right way to do this uh, RESTful API. Just keep in mind, it's all about data. You can borrow some of the business logic, uh, like by agents, like a little bit formula uh, magic, uh, but it's not something you can write a brand new service for your application. And on the other hand, if you are looking for a development environment, accessing Domino in a semi-native way, let's say, Updev pack would be your friend and uh, you can use, for instance, Node.js to develop RESTful services. This feature came uh, into life with Updev pack in Domino 10 and evolved into a certain major, major, uh, maturity in Domino v12. Node.js support is a very important improvement, I think, in Domino code stream, uh, as this new platform is quite popular on the market. And there, have, there, there are numerous possibilities uh, to architect our applications in the Node stack. And there are many tools we can use. In the same way, Updev Pack contains a Java bindings to access Domino on remote. And it turned out that uh, basically, it provides potentials uh, binding other languages as well. So you can bind .NET, you can bind C Sharp, you can bind other languages, and they can access up the pack features, and they can uh, provide a semi-native interface for Domino applications. Let's concentrate into Node.js now uh, and see how it works. Of course, we have Domino server, we have NSF databases, and we also have a Node.js stack. And uh, Domino Update Pack brings a new server task, which is called Proton. You install that into Domino server. And Update Pack also brings a JavaScript module, module called uh, DominoDB.js, which communicates with the Proton task using a special protocol named gRPC. This is our whole setup. We can 
start coding uh, our uh, RESTful services in JavaScript, I don't know, using Express or any similar RESTful service library. We, and we can utilize nominodb.js module to connect to NSF data beautifully. Other application would just connect to our JavaScript module and they don't have to know anything about Domino server on the backend. And here's a little bit uh, of Node.js code. As an example, uh, some endpoints for collaboration today application, they are all in my GitHub account. And as you see, it's plain simple JavaScript code, accessing Domino database using DQL, etc. This code is, uh, the link is uh, at the end of my, slide deck. DQL, let's talk about DQL a little bit. Uh, I mean, HCL or IBM developed uh, Node.js modules uh, in the time. And instead of providing low level access, they created an optimized query language uh, or query technique. This is a very powerful method to query Domino data with a very high performance. And I would recommend John Curtis's it's yesterday session to have an understanding, uh, understanding why DQL is important and uh, why it has so many potentials. Another important topic, I will keep silently and uh, in a speedy way, but it, it's a huge topic. It's IAM, uh, Identity and Access Management. It's coming with uh, Aptev pack. It's completely for authentication purposes. It's, talk, it's using token, it supports OAuth and different technologies. I definitely recommend Canadian, Canadian user group videos uh, about how to configure this IAM. So bottom line, if you were to choose a solution now, that would be a tough choice for you. Uh, because from capability point of view, I mean, Updev pack seems a little bit more capable right now, but actually it's about maturity. Uh, and but, but at the end of the day, you can use Updev pack to develop brilliant uh, Node.js microservices, or you can choose any language you would like and expose some Domino data in a nice and clean way using Keep. It also depends on the need. Updev pack using gRPC protocol, and it has its own advantages, like uh, especially on the uh, performance basis. But with Keep, you are stuck with the HTTP, but you will eliminate the need of middleware complete and go straight with a browser application or a mobile application directly. And personally, I would prefer, I would rather have both solutions uh, in the portfolio uh, because Updev Pack creates more language binding and can create more language binding in the future and provide more options to the, uh, outs especially outsider developer community. And it's also good to bring new blood into the market. So we have a couple of mm, old methods, let's say. We have existing apps, especially when we have an existing apps, especially in X pages, we can develop simple and quick solutions with uh, our old friend REST components. So this is what I generally prefer for quick add-ons. Uh, when I need a small ad hoc uh, thing, small integration scenario, maybe a UX enhancement like type ahead or data table, these components are nicely provided by HCL or formerly IBM as a part of the X pages. And they provide programmable wrappers for old Domino access services. They allow us to customize almost anything, almost everything in the system, including response and uh, deciding which fields to be exposed in great detail. And also we can write our own services in server-side JavaScript or in Java. They can also implement small kind of event model. So we can put some business logic, especially in on create events, which was the missing point in Domino access services. This is uh, okay for small scale integration scenarios, maybe these UX in, uh, enhancements, uh, but, uh, far, far, far uh, from 
perfect for larger scale implementations. First of all, your code will be spread around the design and inherently it has a major potential to end up with a sp spaghetti code. Uh, of course, we can still hard code everything by ourselves. This is old school. We can use agents, X agents, etc. Sometimes you might even want to prototype simple ideas with a quick and dirty X agent uh, within your database. It's very convenient in, the, in such cases. Or you have hundreds of thousands of lines of codes of Lotus script all tested and proven to work. And you want to use them, easily wrap them into an agent and provide restful services. But obviously this is based on hard coding and they, you have to deal with every little detail. You have to, I, 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 and code organization is still a problem because it doesn't impose a certain architecture. It, it just fits where, where whatever you write and you write ugly code, it turns into a spaghetti code. Uh, but still it's an ad hoc solution. I don't recommend it for mid-scale or large-scale implementations. And speaking about large-scale implementations, let's take a more complicated approach. Java has defined JAX-RS as a pattern for creating RESTful services in Java way. For instance, Apache Wink is one implementation of this. Uh, I gave this example of Wink because it's already shipped with the Domino because Domino Access Services was written in, on top of Wink. Uh, it was also uh, used by Rush on Premises and I think Traveler stuff. And this is a complete Java development and potentially involves some OSGI plugin work. Uh, very useful, very effective for large scope implementation I have used uh, a couple of times. And uh, also, there are a couple of different ways to bring Java into your RESTful services. But before your options, let's try to understand JAXRS. Uh, there are multiple preloaded in JAXRS. Actually, uh, you unknowingly design a part of a huge Java servlet. So, what uh, your code is automatically placed into a Java servlet, into a partial as a Java servlet. And there are multiple uh, components here helping layering, scalable, uh, layering and scalability. And uh, like runtime servlets, uh, request response wrappers, context helpers. If you understand anything on slide, I don't know. <laughs> you don't have to listen, but let me summarize this uh, in a more understandable way. In a closer look, what you have implemented is just that. Bunch of classes, bunch of methods. The core concepts of RESTful uh, services are beautifully adapted into simple Java classes with these little guys named annotations. If you are not familiar with these annotations, they are simply syntactic sugar over uh, Java classes, methods, variables to mark them for specific purposes like this. Path annotations here, path annotation here, just to declare the path of the resource at the beginning. So uh, slash contacts, this, is, this resource is going to be used for this specific uh, type of path. Also, there are other annotations for methods like get request, like, uh, Sometimes we can use get and path request uh, together. And we can also use uh, path patterns to grab some uh, variables from the given uh, URL pattern. Pattern. Annotations can inject this request data into our methods and it will take care of type safety, conver uh, conversion, and also error handling for those in injection. I mean, if you are uh, putting string into an integer, integer it will uh, give back a nice uh, exception uh, to the consumer. Uh, we have res response builders. We can easily uh, construct a response. We can provide a response code uh, at the same time, and we can, uh, create exceptions uh, automatically converted to error responses. Moreover, we can have 
much more complicated responses like downloading a file using a stream, etc. Let's finish with a post example. The same method can be implemented to easily for uh, multiple types of input data at the same time. And uh, JAXRS processor will pick the right method uh, to, uh, depending on the incoming data type. And we can uh, also inject those data in automatically into methods as well. So, uh, JAXRS can be used inside or outside. I mean, we can use, uh, we can develop a OSGI plugin. We can develop a, a JAXRS Java classes uh, within our NSF. Let's take a look at this uh, briefly. We can package all extensions, uh, all these, I mean, extensions on the right, resource classes, tools and utilities, controllers, accessors, etc. everything packed in a OSGI plugin. You can use Eclipse to do that. This is the difficult way, but it pays off large, uh, pays off uh, for large and specialized implementations. Uh, alternative is to use Jesse Gallagher's Jakarta EE plugin. Uh, it's an open source plugin uh, available at OpenNTF that allows us to use JAXRS annotations right inside our Java classes without dealing with any plugin. This is very desirable for many developers because we want the simplicity and the convenience of these clean cut methods to implement RESTful services. But at the same time, we don't want to make it big deal with OSGI plugins, deployments, update sites, etc. Uh, let's give some credit here to Martin Pradney. He has done significant work as an initial and also Jesse Gallagher for importing this into an open source open NTF project. Uh, and of course, there are minor issues caused by XSP engine, uh, which unloads and unloads classes uh, on the fly and interferes uh, with whatever going on at the servlet level. But this is still promising, especially for many small scale implementations. Uh, the last idea is more of an early stage now, but uh, this is again from Jesse and is he inspired from Sven about this. Basically, you might run a full scale Java uh, enterprise uh, application or server such as Open Liberty. Uh, you deploy a part of Domino runtime into Liberty runtime, and you can run on Liberty uh, and access to Domino Java API. Uh, directly. So years ago, IBM was promoting a similar method with DIAOP. Uh, I think it's dead finally, but uh, which is which wasn't the best, but proper and for very simple cases. But uh, at this level, uh, we have further advantage for for sure. So looking at the dark side, I mean, this approach is not easy uh, for inexperienced developers, especially the plugin part. I mean, you have to learn plugin development uh, and that's why it might be a, an overkill uh, for, for really simple, small projects uh, and needs. Also, the tool selection is critical. Uh, Apache Wink is part of product, but it's an old school API. I, I'm, uh, it's not even maintained anymore uh, at the Apache. Other implementations are great, but they are, there might be issues to integrate them into uh, ACL Domino. And using JAXRS inside NSF, on the other hand, is an open NTF project. And you need to know, you need to make sure you know uh, what you are doing uh, if you are using that kind of uh, add-on. There are a couple of uh, sessions. I mean, I had a session five years ago about uh, solely on uh, Apache Wink and uh, Jesse had uh, his uh, own uh, GitHub project. You can look at it. And <clears throat> so far we have talked about different methods and all of these ideas are great, but they might, may not be perfect as we see so far. 
So there are ones easy to implement, others, uh, they are difficult, but convenient and so on. And our last option may be the, to use best of different worlds at the same time. In this scenario, we can use a domino keep service for one thing and reuse a couple of X agents already designed, maybe implement a very complicated process in the JAX RS and uh, bring everything down, uh, wrap them, with our favorite language, for instance, the favorite framework, for instance, not JS or Spring, et cetera. Uh, we can add some non-domino services in the, uh, on the way uh, and put some magic to the process. And this is the hybrid way to go. In a hybrid approach, we can combine all these services into one middleware. And uh, this will provide a consistency uh, for security, for use of URL, for optimization with caching and similar techniques, etc. I have added some tooling recommendation at this stage, but we probably uh, don't have time for it. So I leave it here for Q and A, uh, and make sure you can uh, you can look into those tools. And uh, there are testing tools. And finally, once again, we thank to all sponsors of Collapse Fair and of course, all Collapse Fair team together, such an amazing lineup for this online event. And I guess we can have a couple of questions because we have five minutes. By the way, in the end of my slides, there are a list of resources for my session, make sure uh, you look at that. <laughs> yeah, first time speaking. <laughs> I'm an I'm amateur. <laughs> Can I uh, make everyone somehow? You're welcome. I'm not sure if there is a way to provide everyone uh, with speaking, but uh, don't be shy to post your question uh, to the chat. Otherwise, uh, thank you everyone uh, for attending my session and have a good one. <laughs>